Well, hello everyone and welcome to my first English tutorial in which I'm going to try to explain all the characteristics of a nameplate of a three-phase induction motor. In the next tutorial I'll do next time, I'm going to wire the external connection to perform connections uh, to perform a star triangle start of this of this kind of motors. Okay, talking about the nameplate. The nameplate is uh, a very important element that we have to know how to interpret in the three-phase induction motor and generally speaking in any kind of motor we look at. Because uh, it not only gives us a, a great amount of information, not only about the internal working of the motor, which is a very important information, but the protection we have to choose and regulate to protect it against overloads. Uh, to regulate the protections against overloads, um, it's very important to be very accurate. So that's why it's necessary to know the meaning of all these letters and numbers. Starting with this first data, um, which is the type of the motor. In this case, it's a three-phase motor working in alternating current. So I'm going to find in the junction box of this motor six different terminals, six connections, which are corresponding to the three winnings of the stator, input and output terminals. Okay, the next value, then we have um, here the serial number, which is going to help us to replace the motor if it's necessary. And we have here the protection index, which makes reference to the size of particles which are not allowed to penetrate inside the housing. The mounting index, uh, in this case a B3, which makes reference to the mechanical clamping. Okay, mm, from here we are going to focus on the electrical characteristics of the model. The name plate of the screen is divided in two different sides. The values on, on the left side are for a 50 Hz frequency grid, and the values on the right side are for a 60 Hz frequency grid. Okay, in this uh, video, we are going to focus on the 50 Hz frequency, although the meanings of, uh, are the same for one or another frequency. Okay, the values on the right side of the 50 Hz value are, are the voltages of the grids we are allowed to connect the motor. And this is a parameter which, ha which we have to interpret very good. The manufacturer is telling us that if we want to configure it, configure it in triangle, we must connect the motor to a 230 three-phase grid. While if we want to configure a star connection, we must fit, it, uh, fit this motor with a 400 volts uh, grid. Both values, both uh, values are line values. Therefore, to perform a star triangle start of this motor, we have to connect it to a 230 volt three-phase grid because is the maximum voltage that the winds in the windings withstand. Remember that in a triangle connection, the line voltage is the same as the phase voltage, which is the voltage of the windings. While in a star connection, the, the phase voltage is going to be the square root of three times the line voltage. So in both cases, the windings are submitted to 230 volts, which is what the manufacturer is telling us. You can see it on your screen right now. So the element which uh, limits, finally limits the, the pit voltage of the motor 
are the installations of the windmills. You must realize that if we, if, uh, we feed the motor uh, to a higher voltage, the insulations are not going to be strong enough. So they're in risk of perforation and a short circuit could appear. So you have to be careful when you fit a, a motor, okay? Well, the next value we can see on the nameplate is the useful power, which is the power developed by the shaft, and this is very important, the power developed by the shaft. The motor, you have to know that the motor is going to consume an amount of energy from the grid, but part of that energy is lost in different conversions of energy or frictions, etc. So the final power developed by the shaft in nominal conditions is the value in the nameplate that, that I'm pointing at. Remember that the nominal conditions are the maximum working conditions for a single load. In these conditions, the motor will be consuming the ampatches uh, that, uh, that I'm going to show you right now. The motor will be consuming the sound purchase 1.82 for a triangle connections, uh, connection and 1.05 amps for a star connection. And in the same conditions, the power factor will be 0 0.78, which is a low um, power factor. Okay, um, if we had this motor alone, we'll have to, to rise this power factor with, um, with capacitors. Then we have the speed of the shaft. In this case, the speed of the shaft will be in the nominal conditions, 1,370 RPMs. This speed will always be the shaft speed, never what we call the synchronism speed, which is the magnetic field speed. The magnetic field speed is defined by the formula 60 times the frequency divided by the pairs of poles. And this value has to be higher than the shaft speed. In our case, it is 60 times 50 hertz divided by two pairs of poles. This results in uh, 1,500 RPMs which is the, immediate, the immediately higher value to 1,370 RPMs. So with this characteristic, we have no need to look inside the motor to know, for example, the amount of poles it has. In our case, this motor will have four poles, two pair of poles. So it's very easy to know the internal, the internal construction of this type of motors following that formula. Okay, the rest of values and are tolerances of voltages and amperages depending on the working connection. For instance, the motor could be fitted between 220 and 240 volts for a triangle connection and between 380 and uh, 420 volts for a star connection. Okay, and the same facts for the line currents are shown below. So these are only tolerances, okay? And now we are going to, to explain the uh, the last value we can see on the, on the name plate, okay? This value, is, uh, which is very important, is the service factor. The service factor will let us to choose the right protection for this motor because this factor is representing how many times the nominal current we can use to feed the motor with no overloads, with no overheatings. 
So in our case, the manufacturer is telling us that this motor will not be overloaded, meanwhile the current will not be higher than 110% the nominal current. This is very useful because um, then we can choose the overload protection and regulate it accurately. Okay, and well, uh, this is the, the way we have to interpret the nameplate of a three-phase induction motor. Hope this video had been useful for you and uh, comment it if you want and see you in the next tutorial. Well, goodbye everyone, see you.